up. So it is Tuesday, June 14th, 2022 at 7.34 p.m. Good evening. My name is Christian Klein and I'm the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals calling this meeting of the board to order. I'd like to confirm that all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Patrick Hanlon. Here. Kevin Mills. Here. Daniel Riccardelli. Here. Ben Holy. Benkit, where'd you go? Benkit, you're on mute. Back a second ago. We'll pick him back up in a sec. Um, representing the town, uh, we have Rick Valarelli, our board administrator. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. And uh, Vincent Lee helping us out as well. Here. Good to have you here. Um, and then we have, uh, there's four hearings on the docket for this evening. Uh, the first two, uh, we will just be continuing on, but I just wanted to see if there's anyone here um, on behalf of 82 Grandview Road. Seeing none. Yes. And, oh, you are here. Yes. Well, we are here as opposing. Oh, I see. We're, yes. We're... So we will be continuing um, the case we, the applicant has requested additional time. I, I understand that there are some um, some possible issues with with some of the abutting neighbors, and that they were yes. to work that out in the background. Okay, um, so we we are abutting neighbors, and we haven't heard from them. So how long does this go on for? Um, so oh, how much time? We were planning, so tonight we were planning to continue for two weeks on that hearing. Um, so that would bring us to the twenty eighth. I am also an abutting neighbor. Ah, okay. also in disagreement okay um i would ask so we were talking about this just briefly uh mr valorelli i think the idea is we will continue it one more time and if we don't hear from them then we will ask them to withdraw is that correct that's correct mr chairman so we'll continue that till june 28th okay and then at that time if they have not submitted new materials or requested to go forward we will ask them to formally withdraw that is correct okay we can you put it on a bit? We, we were informed that they were withdrawing this application. Is that is that accurate? They were, I'm sorry, they were what with the application? They were withdrawing it, not extending it or continue it, withdrawing it. So we have not received any formal communication from them. Okay. They, I'm just repeating what was said to us. And No, honestly, we have no information at all. No. We haven't heard from them in two weeks. So they, so they do have the right to extend it without providing any request or information. So we're just going to, they had requested a continuance. We're allowing it to continue one more time for two more weeks. And then we'll yeah, have they, to they, present they, or we will ask. They did not request a second one. So um, you're, you're allowing it, is that true? That is correct. May I ask, is this regarding uh, 68 Brentwood Road? This is considering Grandview Road. But not Brant Wood. No, 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 Grandview. I apologize, thank you. And then the other case we are gonna be continue, voting to continue this evening is 30 Venner Road. Um, we did receive some, uh, we received a new plan yesterday, um, but the plan did not come with elevations and the applicant is working with his, um, uh, with his architect to prepare uh, drawings for review by the board and by the public um, ahead of June 28th. And so we are going to be voting to continue that one as well. Um, then the two hearings that we are going to have going forward, um, is there someone appearing on behalf of 68 Brentwood Road? I'm present as an yes. Okay. But is the, yes. is the applicant here? I am. Okay, perfect. And is the applicant here for 3840 Newport Street? Yes, sir. Yes, we're here. Wonderful. So this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely consistent with an act extending certain COVID-19 measures signed into law on February 15th, 2022. This act includes an extension until July 15th, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. 
Further, all members of public bodies are allowed to continue to participate remotely. Public bodies may continue to meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website, identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference, others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. As chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. As the board will be taking up new business at this meeting, as chair, I make the following land acknowledgement. <clears throat> Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Arlington, Massachusetts discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as Monotomy, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges the Town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. So with that, I will move to our agenda. Uh, the next up is item number two, uh, which is the approval of the written decision for 44 Edmund Road. This was a decision that was written by <coughs> uh, Patrick Hanlon and distributed among members of the board that uh, had a chance to comment and return comments. And then a final draft was issued late this afternoon. Are there any additional questions or comments from the board in regards to the decision for 44 Edmund Road? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve the written decision for 44 Edmund Road? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. Mr. Mills? Vote of the board. Um, Mr. DuPont, who voted on the initial application, is unavailable this evening due to illness. Um, Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye, so that decision is approved. Brings us to item three on our agenda. It's the approval of the written decision for 39 Tufts Street. Um, as before, this was written by Mr. Hanlon, distributed to the board for questions and comments, and then a final draft issued later this afternoon. Are there any additional questions or comments in regards to that draft decision? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve the written decision for 39 Tufts Street? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Mills. Vote of the board. Again, unfortunately, Mr. DuPont is unable to join us this evening. Uh, Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Rigardelli. Aye. And the chair votes aye. That <clears throat> motion is passed. So those two written decisions are complete. Uh, this brings us to the hearings on our agenda this evening. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have two cases that we are just going to be voting to continue. Um, there is one raised hand in the audience. I will go ahead and ask um, what the question is in regards to. Yes, um, uh, Mr. Valorelli indicated that was, I think he was waiting for some information from the applicant. And, and um, I'm sorry, can I have your name and address for the My record? My name is John McLaughlin, the 86 Grandview Road. Okay. And I was curious what the information was, what information was actually requested. So, um, Mr. Valerelli, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, my understanding is the applicant had filed for a special permit um, and had been advertised and put on the docket for the May 24th hearing. Um, ahead of that meeting, they had indicated that they were in discussion with some of their neighbors in regards to the details of the project. They had asked that it be continued and that they have an opportunity to try to resolve those issues. And um, that is the essentially the last we've heard from them. 
Um, our under the under only understanding we have is that that process may be ongoing, um, and so that's the reason that we are we are just continuing this evening, and we are not in receipt of any new information. Uh, you you said but, that, but I, it was my understanding that it was some information was requested the application wasn't filled out completely i believe uh, second of all we are the abutter and uh there's <laughs> another abutter online here as well so mm -hmm. uh mr valerelli um uh, mr chairman so in an effort to appease uh, the neighbors the applicant was going to redesign the entire project uh we have not received the redesign as of tonight uh, so I think it's in the best interest of all parties to continue to the 28th. And then as the chair indicated, if uh, we don't have anything by the 28th, then um, we should just uh, eliminate the request. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so turning to the public hearings on tonight's agenda. Uh, here's some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicant to introduce themselves or themselves and make their presentation to the board. We'll then request the members of the board ask what questions they have on the proposal. After the board's questions have been addressed, I will open the meeting for public comment. And at the conclusion of public comment, the board will deliberate and vote on the matter. So the first is number Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, you should are, 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 I'm wondering if we shouldn't be taking a vote to actually do the continuances that we've said that we were going to do. That is coming up immediately. Great. Okay. So uh, next item on our agenda is item number four, which is docket number 3696, 82 Grandview Road. Um, as we've discussed this evening, uh, this request is um, was continued at our May 24th hearing um, to this date. And at this time, we are proposing to further continue to uh, our next date, which would be June 8th um, at 7.30 p.m. Uh, may I have a motion to continue? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I move that the uh, hearing in uh, the 82 Grandview Road case be continued to a date certain of uh, uh, June 28th. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Okay, so a roll call vote of the board to continue the special permit hearing for 82 Grandview Road to Tuesday, June 28th, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. Mr. DuPont is not available. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman is also unavailable this evening. Mr. Holly. Aye. And the chair votes aye. We are continued on 82 Grandview Road. Okay, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I just want, I just think that, that we should all know that what we've said so far is that if the applicant is not ready to proceed in two weeks, uh, we would ask the, the applicant to uh, withdraw. Um, the applicant is in control of his own application and he may or may not be in that situation. And depending upon what the underlying facts and circumstances are, we may or may not be legally entitled really to proceed with the application. So all we can say in the absence of any communication with the applicant and, and, and any idea of what it is that the applicant may propose, if anything, it's our current intention uh, to raise the issue in the way that the chair has described, um, but it's really too early for us to say for certain exactly what would happen um, in, in two weeks, because the situation uh, may be quite different from anything that we envision. Quite true, thank you. Um, next item on our docket is number five. I Agenda item number five, docket 3697-30 Venner Road. This is a continuance from May 24th. Um, at that, at the end of that hearing, we had requested that the applicant reconsider um, their proposal to uh, allow it to come forward without requiring a variance. Um, but the applicant has provided a ground floor plan of uh, their proposed addition, which appears to comply with these IDR and setback requirements, but they did not provide any additional information. So we have no elevations. We don't have a site plan. All we have is a, just a, a single drawing of the, 
the first floor plan. So we have notified the applicant that we will be continuing on their case this evening and that they should have a full application for us ahead of the next meeting of the board. With that, um, <clears throat> yeah, I have a motion to continue the special permit hearing for 30 Venner Road to Tuesday, June 28th, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. Mr. Chairman. Hamlin. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. So this is a vote of the board to continue the special permit application for 30 Venner Road to Tuesday, June 28th, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. Uh, Mr. DuPont is unavailable. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman is unavailable. Mr. Holly. Aye. And the chair votes aye. We are continued on 30 Venner Road until Tuesday, June 28th. That brings us up <coughs> to item number six on our agenda this evening, which is docket number 36996968 Brantwood Road. Um, so I would ask uh, the applicant to um, introduce themselves and tell the board what they are looking to do. Um, hi, my name is Jim Doherty. I am um, the owner of the property and uh, this was my childhood home. Um, recently uh, acquired the property and uh, plan to renovate it and uh, put an addition on it. Um, the addition, as you'll note, is in the um, right rear corner of the house. It's 26 by 26, and it will replace a, a porch, um, two-story porch, top being a deck that was 24 <laughs> by uh, 22 by 14. Um, and on the front, there will be a minor little push out um, to create more room in the foyer. Um, uh, all of these things as the um, board um, is probably aware, this property, um, if it were a vacant lot, could be constructed um, without any need to come before the board. Um, but because um, there is an addition um, in an antiquated bylaw, uh, it requires me to come um, and seek your relief. Um, and that's what I'm here to do tonight. Obviously, uh, a new home not only could be built uh, to replicate uh, the rendering you have in front, but it could also um, uh, provide for a substantially larger home being built, again, within the confines of all the setbacks, et cetera. So um, I won't bore you with more. I'd rather just answer any questions you may have. Um, so I will defer back to the chair. Thank you very much. Um, I will go ahead and share the application. So what we see here, this is, so this is a site plan for the property. Brentwood Road is the top. Uh, the existing house sits here. So the proposed addition, as explained by the applicant, off the back on one side. And then there's a small proposed entry and everything is within the side yard setbacks of the property. The plan at the basement level, first floor, second floor, elevations. This is the from the rear house. This is the left side. Front where you would all you would be seeing is the new addition at the front door. And then uh, the right side elevation piece at the front and the addition at the rear. Sections through. Some details and that's all structural framing. Um, I just want to go back to, um, so this is the information page. So the 
the lot is conforming, the frontage is conforming. Um, really, the issue is that um, the large addition, that it's over 750 square feet, requires a determination by the board that the addition is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood, and the board will apply the criteria for special permit in order to uh, make that determination. So these are the, the increases in the individual floor areas and the overall. Are there questions from the board? No questions from the board? Okay. So with that, I'm, I will go ahead and open uh, the meeting for public comment. So public questions and comments will be taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing our decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. Chair asks those wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing to please be patient and allow those wishing to speak for the first time to go ahead of them. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participant tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You will be called upon by the meeting host. You'll be asked to give your name and address and you'll be given <laughs> questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair. Please remember to speak clearly. And once all public questions and comments have been addressed, the public comment period will be closed. And I will do my best to show um, any documents you request um, as they are discussed. So with that, nope. Um, first person with their hand up um, is Eliza Burden. Hi. Um, you give your uh, name and address for the record, please. Sure. Uh, my name is El Eliza Burden, and I'm at 44 Brantwood Road. Um, I was just wondering if the applicant could uh, talk about access to that, the two car garage. It looks like um, the garage, the access to the garage is from the back. And I'm just wondering if there's any indication of, you know, how, how, how large that driveway would have to be to access it from the back and whether there are stormwater uh, considerations um so that's just you know it's how how much of that backyard has to be paved and the side yard to gain access to that back garage certainly mr doherty sure Thank you. um the, uh, the current driveway will be utilized the current driveway actually um goes further beyond where the proposed addition um currently is ending and where the uh, former rear porch is. So that driveway will be continued to be utilized. And um, I believe on one of the drawings um, on the site plan, maybe another uh, drawing a two in itch right there. Thank you. Um, you can see the little archway where the cars would then turn in. And it's about a 20 foot distance. It's not going to be impervious. Uh, or pervious, it's going to be impervious. So, uh, or vice versa. I always get that wrong. Mr. Valerelli can correct me. Uh, but the, uh, it's going to be patio so that the um, water will continue to um, kind of take through the, um, through the ground back there, anyhow. Thank you. Um, you have a further question, Ms. Burton? Um, I'm just having trouble seeing how that how a car could go. It's, it seems like the driveway would have to be much longer in order to make the turn to put the car in the garage facing Brentwood Road. Like it would have to make a big, the, the entry is not on the side of the garage structure. It's at the back, correct? Correct. Yeah. So my understanding is that there would effectively be Pardon my tr tracing here on the plan. Um, 
that there would need to be, be an extension of the previous driveway approximately in this area to allow a car to drive in back into the drive back into the garage and then come out is that correct mr doherty that's correct and where you um did a nice job i will compliment you uh, on doing that <laughs> if if we're looking towards the screen the bottom right hand corner um that would be probably cut out of 45 or some type mm -hmm. of oval right there okay. so right where your cursor currently is it would probably go halfway up to that writing on the side yeah it's on the um building envelope side there so it wouldn't be a 45 degree angle it would just kind of be like an oval kind of to take the edge off that corner okay that's all all that green space there next to it as well and, and is the slope of the land such that you don't need to do much modification to make that work no very little okay And obviously, we, uh, we're not going to build a, uh, a garage so that we didn't have the architect make sure we could put a two cars in. Okay. Is that clear, Ms. Burton? Um, <clears throat> it, it is clear. Anything further? Nope. Um, just a concern about, uh, I guess, the the trees on the back hill. Um, just wondering if there's, uh, yeah, I feel like this, the, the lot is sloped. So I'm wondering how, what, what the, what the treatment of the slope will be on the back of the property. And I know there are trees on that. So how are those being protected? Um, because I think they're in the setback. So, mm -hmm. That's just one additional question. Okay. I, I, I am fairly confident that our, our next speaker will address that question as well. Um, but Mr. Doherty, if you, what did do you, have you submitted a tree plan to the town? Um, we did, we needed a, a um, revision to it. Um, so I have it and I got the revision from the arborist today. Um, and so it will be being delivered tomorrow, but to answer the um, the the question, um, without first of all, um, there are a tremendous amount of trees that are down there, many of which are not in the setback, um, which are still going to stay remain. Um, there's going to be a couple of trees um, taken down that are out, outside the setback itself um, in that back area, uh, but not down over the over the um, slope. But the tree, the tree plan's already been discussed. It was a typographical er um, error on it. Um, so um, we don't anticipate any issue with it. Okay. Good. Okay. Was there anything further, Ms. Burden, or are you all set? All set, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next on our list is uh, Steve Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, I, I also had questions about the, uh, the applicant's proposal for a driveway and uh, trees. The first one being that uh, currently the, the applicant was saying the driveway extends beyond what's shown on the existing plan that's up on the screen right now. I'd, I'd like to know how much... Uh, how much additional pavement or added that currently is now open space or green space or, or not paved? I'm sorry, your audio sort of broke up there a little bit. Are you asking how much sort of additional area will be taken up by the addition and the driveway? No, about the driveway in particular, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Doherty? Um, as I say, I grew up in the house since the 70s, um, the driveway went back where your um, line terminates to the rear of the property. That the driveway probably went beyond that about, uh, pick a number, anywhere between 20 and 30 feet. Um, it went slightly into looking at a parallel line to the proposed. 
So that area there is going to become lawn area. Um, the buffer on the side, um, looking at this towards the um, uh, right-hand side where those hex marks are for the fencing, that's, uh, that's being um, increased as well. Uh, there'll be more trees um, from where the uh, fence mark on the right side going to the rear of the budding property. A little past there, but then going across from right to left above where lot 23 is set there. Um, that's kind of where there's a drop off there. And there's going to be new trees planted in there as well. So as it relates to the driveway, uh, the driveway coming in from the street to, um, as I say, about, um, well, 26, the other um, addition there was 20, uh, was 14. So about 12 feet additional layer of driveway, um, if you will, and then in front of the 26. I don't have it exact, but I mean, the net result is it's gonna be pretty close to what was there, just in a different configuration. But again, in terms of, if you look at the, um, the site area coverage compared to the lot size, which is um, in excess of uh, 13,500 square feet, uh, it's a very low number, particularly in comparison to um, even a lot of other properties in that neighborhood. Uh, Mr. Chairman, please. Yes, uh, thank you. That that's helpful. So, you're saying the driveway currently is going. Parts of it are going to be pulled up, and parts are going to be paved behind the house. Or does the driveway currently end where the line shows it ending right now? Not, well, not the '70s, but right now. Mr. Burton. I'm oh, sorry. Excuse me, um, Mr. Doherty. I I I don't. Um... I don't see where anything depicting where the end of that driveway ends. If you are referring to the line that is at the back of the front box, correct, right there? Right. Um, I, I have no idea what that means. That's not where the driveway currently stops, and it's not where it uh, ever did stop. So I'm not quite sure what that mark is. Okay. I, I, I see, Mr. Chair. I, I thought that was really what was the existing facts on the ground, but you're and the driveway really currently extends far beyond that. Okay. Yeah. Either a wash or a, a somewhat increase of the impervious area, but you're going to make sure it's impervious it's materials let the water into the earth, right? The two, two I, and ironically, uh, where that line is, by the way, I figured out what that line is. The line is just following across from where it's showing the 11 and a half on the other side, so you can see kind of ah. where that is. But... Um, so two, ironically, to about right about that point there, it will be asphalt. And then from that point down and then making the left, if you're looking the way we are going to the right behind the proposed addition, that's going to be the pot that's impervious or vice versa. Right. Okay, that, that's helpful because uh, as uh, Ms. Burden was raising, I, I think they're you know, as always, issues to do with water runoff. Lastly, I was trying to look at the pictures that were on the planning document um, in, in the planning department's document that showed a, what looked to be a very large tree uh, as looking at the front of the property to the left. I couldn't tell if that was the next door neighbor's property or yours. My guess is it's not because that's where the driveway is. Um, there's actually two. So there's one on my property um, and there is one between my driveway and the abutters driveway. The ones between the abutters driveway, uh, those are not coming down. The one in the front um, has created damage to the house uh, for years, quite frankly, um, and is diseased and a hazard, and that one will be coming down. Um, correct, that, what, that picture you're showing there, it's, it's split in two, if you will, but it's uh, it's actually classify it as a one tree. Okay, Mr. Chair, uh, one last point I'll make. I, um, I I would hope that you would be seeking the tree warden's concurrence that it's disease and should come down because at least the pictures that I can see, it looks quite healthy. And um, it probably is, I don't know, but perhaps covered by the tree bylaw here. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Moore. 
Uh, next on our speakers list uh, is Stephen Cohen. If you can give your name and address for the record. Yes, Stephen Cohen, 58 Brantwood Road. I have two questions. Um, the first question relates to the timing of the project. And I apologize if this is not within the purview of, of this panel, but um, the house has been vacant for about a year and a half now. And, and given the substantial nature of the proposed addition, which to be frank, I'm quite in favor of because I think at the end of the day, it will be benefit the neighborhood. But I'm concerned about um, just the safety of the, near, of, the, of the neighborhood in the sense that there's been a number of equipment and construction equipment that have been positioned in the front yard. And I don't know what kind of rules or regulations pertain to uh, making sure it's safe, uh, for example, for all the neighborhood children and whatnot. So that's the first question. I can pause and withhold the second question if you want to take that first. Um, I would actually address that to Mr. Valarelli, if he wouldn't mind. What are the requirements for securing a site such as this? Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, there is the construction control agreement. Here is the good neighbor agreement. So that's addressed in a couple of different ways. Um, I have not personally seen the, uh, the site myself, uh, but uh, the builder has to comply with those two agreements. And I believe it addresses those, those items as well as uh, starting times of work and uh, so on and so forth. Are there any particular requirements for sort of fencing off of the property during construction? Not in this case here. We do request that the builder, if they have an open excavation, does uh, fence off the, the, the excavated area itself with a uh, six foot chain link fence are equal uh, for protection, but uh, that is mainly enforced uh, for new houses. But we can certainly make that a condition if the board uh, feels fit to uh, grant this. Uh, Mr. Cohen, anything further? And just to follow up quickly on that first question, is there mm -hmm. any guidance that is can be provided on, on sort of the scope of length of time for this particular project? Mr. Doherty, do you have a sense as to what the construction period would be once you begin? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to respond to the uh, gentleman's um, suggestion. The house has been vacant for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. The house hasn't been vacant. My mother passed away um, in January of 2020. Um, myself, my brother, and other individuals have uh, resided in the house. The house was transferred in December of 21. Um, as you can imagine, the court system wasn't really spinning um, during COVID. And so um, the house was, um, was initially vacant um, right about the end of December. At that point in time, um, we were under the impression that this did not trigger this bylaw because of the configuration of the rear porches. Um, we didn't find out for a couple of months after that once we um, started with our plans. So that slowed things down. Not blaming anyone, I understand you know, um, things, things change and fear is fear for everyone. I have no problem with. Um, so the true benchmark is a few months ago, our anticipation was to be in there, uh, for the holiday season this year. Um, with the hearing coming up, I started trying to think whether that's realistic. Um, probably not. Um, but certainly it would be weather tight in terms of equipment on the lawn. Um, there is a dumpster permit that was pulled, um, that is, is, uh, uh, has been issued and there is a trailer that's on there, uh, a dump trailer every now and then a couple of times, um, equipment that was in the backyard needed to be relocated out to the front yard. So work could be performed in the backyard, um, by other equipment, but, um, almost, um, every single day and night, um, any equipment has been moved to the rear. Um, regarding the fence, our intent was to put a fencing <clears throat> on the um, left side you're showing there, just beyond the tree. It's about 17 feet from my property to the uh, abutters. And our intent was to put temporary fencing 
on that side and then down a section. Um, obviously any, any fencing, if people want to get over it, they'll find a way. Um, but that is the clear open point. It would be like walking down your driveway as such. Um, and that's what we intended to do. As um, Mr. Valerelli pointed out with the other notification and procedures, we certainly intend to do that. We've shared the plans with our abutters, um, kept them abreast as best we could moving through this. Um, and we're certainly available if anybody has any questions. Thank you. Mr. Cohen? And my next question relates to the backyard. Um, the, the topography of the neighborhood, there's, there's, it's pretty much a hill and there's a sub relatively substantial slope behind the house. And we've noticed this summer dump trucks um, depositing landfill, if you will. And also it appears large retaining stones are, are positioned back there. Has the property owner um, acquired the necessary permits for, for putting in those retaining walls? Um, so in order to be a retaining wall, it has to be, I believe it's, Ms. Valerie, is it four feet in height for a retaining wall? Uh, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. So if it's four feet in height from the base of the footing to the top of the wall, there's no permit required. Um, four, um, over four feet in height from the base of the footing uh, to the top of the wall, up to nine feet, um, there is a building permit required. Anything over that, 10 feet and above, has to be designed by a structural engineer. Um, Mr. Doherty, are there uh, walls being constructed in the rear lot? There's a, a wall being constructed um, along the abutter's neighbor. Um, on one side, there's um, stabilization, if you will, uh, reaffirming of other rock walls on, on one side into the rear, all, all within the existing um, elevation, if you will. Um, there has been a permit issued by the town, um, committed with engineered plans for an eight foot wall, uh, looking at um, the right hand side of the lot. Sorry, what was the height of that wall? Eight feet. Eight feet. Um, does that address your question, Mr. Cohen? Yes, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, next, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> um, uh, Judith Krollitz. Unmute, unmute myself. Uh, yes, this is Judy Krulowitz. I live at Four Stony Brook Road. Good evening. Good evening to you. Uh, well, I'm going to follow up and or continue with the questions about the rear. Um, my property is down the hill. Uh, from Mr. Doherty's uh, at the end of this big hill. Uh, the, the, the hill has um, historically, before even I moved in, I understand that uh, the family, uh, what do you call it, uh, in, added fill and whatever it was to uh, change the elevation of the backyard. Probably so it could be more state, more more uh, level or something like that. But as a result, one of the concerns I have is that this portion of the hill that's behind all the houses on Grantwood is very steep, it's steeper than the others. Uh, it has a, a totally different slope, um, and it is essentially, um, I guess, artificially high and and. Uh, plane is sticks out more and then it's a, a much sharper drop. My concerns are uh, about erosion and uh, about um, the stability of that hill, given that it is uh, a partly created hill 
and uh, concern about water runoff uh, right down to and into my property or uh, overflow into uh, the brook that um, was partially covered by um, that uh, the landfill that was done um, kind of blocked it off. So it's almost like a, a it doesn't run uh, freely to uh, Spy Pond now, I think, I think. Uh, but I'm, I'm concerned about uh, the stability of, of that, how, how far out this uh, concrete is going to come, and how far out the cars are going to be uh, reaching um, in the backyard. And I'm also concerned about the trees because the trees, um, um, I would think, uh, help stabilize the, the hill. Um, Mr. Jordy, can you explain a little, possibly a little further about the sort of the scope of the work that's ongoing in the in the rear yard and sort of what steps are being taken to um, to deal with questions about erosion and the stability of the site? So first, first of all, as 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 the young woman mentioned, mm -hmm. the um, the property has been like that for over sixty years. Right. So this is not a new issue mm -hmm. and it has not moved in any of that time uh, since I was a child. Um, so I, 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 I don't mean to sound uh, dismissive, um, but it hasn't moved in 60 years. Mm -hmm. uh, the cars were a lot closer from where we were describing where you um, put your red line on the plan and you showed from that point to, um, if you will, the, the high point beyond that, it's probably about 35 to 40 feet. And as, as mentioned earlier, uh, and then once you go from there, it's probably another 50 feet before you get to the, uh, the abutters line we're talking about. Um, you know, she has a wall, that land was filled um and that is like four feet up from from kind of the low point down there where her her swimming pool is so i i just don't really know how to um explain that much more the rear of the property uh, thank you so if you um see right about where the fence is where the hex marks on those fences are somewhere right around that point the, uh, up on the top i'm sorry Oh, up here. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, if you going from there directly across to the other side yard, correct. That's a, that's a garage on the abutting property, but right across there okay. is kind of where we're talking about where where okay. that the high that's point. It. That's that's is. the edge. And from there, it then tapers down to the back. Um, there's so sort of from um, sort of this is sort of a point where above this line, it's sort of. A little bit flatter and from here it gets more, it gets more steep correct okay. correct and the steepness probably only goes about to where those dotted lines are okay it right right about there and then then you know you have more of a flat area for the rest of the way there um so that's not going anywhere um further than where it where it had been um, it's just being squared off a little on that corner and where the other corner where you brought your line across to, because that's where that engineered wall is going from right, right about where your red line is there up to, um, just, just beyond where the proposed addition is, where it says 21787, if I'm reading that correct. Okay. Yeah. Somewhere right around there. So the retain that, that engineered wall is going along this side. Correct. Okay. Yep. Ms. Krollwitz, does that address your question? Uh, almost. I just want to make sure I'm understanding. So this this uh, second, the lower red line, mm -hmm. uh, you're saying is really the 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 top of the hill, where the flat where where your yards usable yard starts. Where the where where the big blocks are 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 right now uh, stacked. 
Is that correct? correct? The, those, those are just stacked there to go over uh, where the commissioner was just showing where the wall is, where the wall okay. is going. They so just, can, okay. they're just temporarily placed there right now. Um, but yes, where those blocks are right now, it, I think there's like probably six, eight, ten feet behind there to where the actual, if you will, lip of that of that yard ends. Okay, yeah, that that's okay. I understand now. So so the, the they they are right now at the top, and and right. there's gonna then be a some sort of retaining wall or something you're going to put up there where they are right now, where the lower red line is, or no? No, they're going they're going over on the side. If you're looking at this picture here, the left hand side. Yeah. Starting big. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah, basically, those blocks are going right there. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I understand. And and uh, you, you're going to be not getting rid of all the trees that are holding up the rest, I guess, right? No, there's just a couple over um, on this right hand corner, uh, right about where your cursor was. If this is challenging. I appreciate that. <laughs> if you go, if you go up to your red line, yep. where it may, now come down to the side yard set, along that side yard setback, up, 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 up a little, up, up, right there, right on your red line. Okay. We'll leave it right there, so right, right about where his his hand is to the left. There are uh, like three uh, smaller, smaller. When I say smaller, they're not like the ones down there. Yours that are twenty four inch. These are probably like six inch, something like that. They're not in the setback, but those ones are going to be cut. There's three or four of them. You probably wouldn't even see the difference because all the bigger ones are much, you know, behind there, as you know. Um, but yeah, that's it. We're not going anywhere, anywhere down there. Anything further, Ms. Carlitz? No, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Uh, next on our list is um, Nicole Ferrari. Hi, this is Nicole Ferrari. I live at 36 Hillsdale Road. So my property is behind slightly diagonally from that property um, we're discuss discussing. I'm just wondering if there has been any evaluation with the retaining wall that would propose retaining wall and any proposed removal of the trees, what type of effect that would have on the water flow, the groundwater, if the, wa if the tree's being removed, uh, I assume trees absorb in a great deal of water. So I'm just wondering how much water um, could be affected by, or you know, could affect my property essentially. With yeah, certainly these, um, these uh, proposed plans. We are, we are unfortunately getting rather far afield from what we are allowed to to um, keep within our our our, our scope of jurisdiction. Um, so as the town bylaws require that if the impervious area is increased by 350 square feet or more, there needs to be a permit that there needs to be a consultation with the engineering division in regards to water and runoff. Um, this is pervious. My understanding so. uh, from uh, the applicants, what they've portrayed is that the what they're going to be adding is impervious, is, excuse me, is pervious pavement essentially at the rear of the property and the existing driveway will be replaced with a with an impervious um, uh, asphalt driveway from the back of the house back of the existing house excuse me to the street line um, that they are and the applicant is working with the tree warden um, on a tree plan to be approved uh, which is a part of the the town's tree bylaws. Um, I would just ask Mr. Valarelli if there's anything else that uh, that would sort of govern this type of work that is, you know, exterior and unrelated specifically to the proposed uh, construction. There is, Mr. Chairman. There's a whole host of things, but the only obstacle before the board tonight is to approve an addition greater than 750 square feet. This is just the beginning for the applicant. The tree bylaw is automatic. It's part of the application process. 
uh, the impervious area or um, pervious areas will have to be approved by engineering in and of itself. Uh, and just a whole, whole list of other stuff that will, uh, and special services will handle as a standard operating procedure. So the only question before the board tonight is the uh, addition that exceeds 750 square feet. So to answer your question, yes, this is just the beginning of a long, a long checklist of things that will have to be completed before a building permit is issued. Mr. Valerelli, uh, Ms. Ferrari, and does that address your question? Yeah, so that the answer is, is it, it's an unknown at this time. That's correct? That, yes, and, it, and it's, it's, it's outside our jurisdiction, so we don't really have access to additional information on that. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon? The, I, I think it's, I'm a little bit, un, I'm, I'm not entirely happy with the notion that it's outside our jurisdiction. What we have to find is that uh, the alteration or addition is in harmony with other structures, structures and uses in the neighborhood. That involves lots of lots of factors, including the ones that are indicated in, uh, uh, including the ones that are indicated in section 3.3.3. Mm -hmm. So if we were to, let's suppose that instead of this application, we were dealing with something that essentially clear cut all of the trees and but didn't increase the impervious soil but created a real potential problem for increased runoff i think that that would very well go into the determination whether the addition is in harmony with other structures and uses in the in the uh, vicinity so it's really not so narrow as that but on the other hand we are not going to become a substitute for the whole rest of the county organization there are many many laws and many many expert bodies that will be dealing with issues uh, of this kind uh, and we don't actually have a clear-cutting kind of situation from that but you know in some circumstances uh, increased runoff it is very much our business just as cutting down trees is our business and and building impervious so uh, can be our, our business uh, as well so I think our jurisdiction may, may extend under the bylaw just a little further than Mr. Valerelli suggested. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. No, I think part of my point was just that this work seems to be um, not 100% related to the matter before the board and that you know, permits have already been issued and construction is underway on certain features out back and that that's, we don't have jurisdiction over that scope of work. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Doherty, if I could just comment, I believe the um, the young lady is over on this drawing here somewhere down um, in the left corner, um, probably back, maybe a little. I'm not sure if it's the house right there where your cursor is or one more going up at an angle there. Um, but either way, um, uh, that, that uh, the wall is not going to send any um, water that direction. Um, if anything, it's gonna keep water from going in that direction. Um, again, regarding any runoff, there would be less runoff by this because this whole area in the back where you, you were nice enough to draw that second red line, um, that whole area is now gonna be landscaped with you know beautiful trees, um, which, you know, the trees that are there, they're old, old, they're new old growth trees, right? So they're not old growth, but they're relatively new, right? 60, 70 years. Everybody hates the Norway maples, but, you know, they're the trees that were planted uh, pretty much in town. But these trees, there's going to be trees um, just, just to, you know, let everybody know, and in particular, the person that asked the question, uh, in that area up there anyhow. Also along where that retaining wall is going to be for a, for a distance um, going from the back up towards almost probably close to where your first red line is. And in that little corner where the three bushes, uh, trees are being taken, um, those, as I say, they're de minimis. The amount of trees that are going to be going in in the whole area are going to be like four times, um, if not more, than than the small ones we're talking about. As I said earlier, no, no large trees, no trees in the setback, um, nothing like that's taken place. But uh, Mr. Valerelli's correct. I still have to just bring it back to the tree warden to get his approval, which we fully intend to do. 
Great, thank you. Ms. Ferrari, did you have any further questions? Just a quick follow-up. I think I'm not sure if I'm following this. I, I heard um, him say that he was, if anything, it would divert the water. So um, if the water's been diverted, does that mean it will dry up the water that's in the back? Is there enough? Is there currently standing water in the back? Is that what you're saying? There's a there is a brook back there. Along the property line? And what I think is what's being referred to as the green space. Up here. I apologize because I'm on an iPhone. So oh, I think you're see the diagrams very well, but it's mm -hmm. like I said, I'm behind the property between um, Judy's home, the woman who spoke yep. and had the question before me. I'm mm -hmm. I'm right next to her on um, what would be. I think it's this corner property here because I think that Ms. Krollwitz's property extends, I think it extend, includes this lot as well. So I think yours is this one here, going by the town's GPS, which. I think you're, you're correct, Mr. Chairman, and the difference yeah, from the difference from that point where it where it touches uh, Judith South uh, property there as identified, mm -hmm. the distance from there up to that retaining wall um, or the line, the second red line you made across, second it's one. probably about you know sixty feet. It's not even it's not even close. There's nothing going down. Wait, what about the wall? So where did is is there currently a, a brook of some kind in here? There's nothing on the town's website indicating there's a brook and there's nothing on the... There's just water, there's natural water that has run right down between Grantwood Road probably and, and a neighbor's house next to me. Tom's probably comes from uh, the woman behind there as well. Their garage goes right up against there. So you do have you know some that I guess probably goes in there. Beyond that, um, you know, this, it's, uh, I, I think this, uh, you know, okay. Yeah, I, I, I had referred to the, to the town's website to determine if there is actually, you know, any wetlands feature back here. There's no wetlands feature that falls under the town's, uh, purview for protection. So that's not an issue in this. There is a book. Oh, he's gonna have to call on me. So, um, Ms. Ferrari, is that? Yeah, it's not. I mean, my answer isn't. Um, you know, my question isn't answered, but it sounds like, again, it's unknown. Yeah. No, unfortunately, it's yeah. It it, it you know we don't know the hydrology of this area. Um, and so it's nothing that we can particularly address. Um, Ms. Krowitz, I see you have raised your hand for a second time. Yes, I have. Uh, I, I uh, know what uh, uh, Ms. Ferrari is talking about. The, the uh, Stony Brook Road is named Stony Brook Road because there used to be a brook. <laughs> and the brook ran uh, literally right past the back of my property. And it kept going, I believe, down into Spy Pond. And I think right now the water that does seep down goes there also. Mm -hmm. When construction was done on uh, Jason Street, and I guess Hillsdale, um, I guess that was a few years ago, um, Nicole and some other neighbors got serious flooding into their basements, which they had never had before, oh. which is... Uh, you know, where her, her question is coming from. The water in that area, it, it, remember I, I said it, it doesn't go all the way now, it, it has to go underground, but uh, between in that corner where her property and mine sort of abut each other, uh, it is almost like a pond. Uh, in fact, I, I've had uh, a, a mosquito uh, treatment company come and throw pucks of whatever they do to, to deal with the mosquitoes there, just in case. Um, right. Um, is, is, there, is there a different um, 
uh, department. Yeah, department that she or you could, you know, consult with to find out about, you know, water, um, the, the sorts of things that unexpectedly could uh, affect uh, the water, I think, in her basement and the flow of that creek, because mm -hmm. it's, it's the un, unexpected. No, <laughs> absolutely. About. Um, I think I would have to ask Mr. Valarelli if how that something like that might be addressed. I don't know no. myself whether there's you know a town department or division that specifically looks into these matters. Okay. Thank Mr. you. Valarelli? Oops, we'll lose Rick. Rick I'm sorry, I had stepped away for a second. Did you ask a question? This is Nicole Ferrari. I know we were looking for, for Mr. Valarelli. Okay. Thank you. Looking through the names on the list. Mr. Valarelli, are you there? I don't know. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, this is Steve Moore. Uh, I saw Mr. Valarelli appearing under Julie, it looks Julie like Hale's screen. Yes, that's his daughter's name. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm back. Uh, ah, Mr. I stepped away. I don't know if you were looking for me. Apologize. Right, Mr. Valerelli, we were yeah. looking for you. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I time these um, things well. I, I'm back. <laughs> All right. So the, the question was raised. So in the in the lower corner of the property, apparently there's uh, an area that is is currently retaining water. That there's sort of a you know, with that when there's when there's rain, it sort of fills up and then slowly drains away. Okay. Um, is there anyone in town who deals with these kinds of situations? Uh, it's not listed as being, you know, a part of the town's wetlands map, or and it's not identified as a brook or anything like that. So it's not a protected thing. Um, it seems like it's just, you know, just a place where water collects and then drains away. Uh, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. No, we have no jurisdiction over existing conditions. Mm -hmm. um, again, if in fact this project exceeds the impervious area by more than 350 square feet, uh, they, will, they will have to uh, present the stormwater management plan through engineering. Engineering will review this project anyway and will give his, their blessing on the material that they, they propose to use for the driveway. Okay. But to answer your question, no, there is nothing withstanding for existing conditions. Okay. Good. All right, so at this time, there are no more hands raised. <coughs> so with that, I will go up. Cohen has raised his hand for a second time, Mr. Cohen. I just had a quick point of clarification. Mr. Doherty had mentioned that the landfill in the back had not changed in 60 years. And I'm just wondering if he could clarify uh, all the dump trucks that have been dumping stuff in the back, what, what that pertained to and how that hasn't changed the back topography. Mr. Doherty, are, are you receiving soils in the... There the were there were three deliveries of loom type material mm -hmm. that basically um, was part of was part of just grading um, the rear yard there in preparation for the site. There, um, you know, um, it, as you know, on a construction project, uh, there's going to be more trucks that will be arriving as well that will have some stone in there, for example, to put under footings. Um, there will be um, stone trucks coming with some stone uh, to put up against the uh, retaining wall for the engineered plans. So uh, there will 
those uh, trucks all arrived on a single day, uh, and I think they were gone um, from the first truck arrived to the last truck left was maybe um, three or four hours. Um, we try to limit it. We think we do a pretty pretty good job, and we certainly intend to do it. Keep in mind, um, I grew up there, and I chose to go back there to live. Um, so there's a reason why. Thank you, Mr. Doherty. Um, Mr. Cohn, did you have anything further? No, thank you. Thank you. Um, have another speaker, um, Nellie Aikenhead. Ms. Aikenhead, if you want to. Yes, thank you. So I'm just commenting Sorry, on a couple of things. Give me the address of the record, please. Sorry. 54 Bramwood Road. I'm not really here to object or support, but I don't know about the loan trucks, but there are also three semi tractor trailer trucks full of giant concrete blocks that came in. It wasn't one day, it was at least two or three, and they were dumped in the backyard. And then I heard earlier that they had permits pulled. But I looked online after getting the notice in my mailbox about tonight's hearing and the permits were really for demo and not much else. So I don't think there's any permits for the backyard or the addition or the retaining walls or whatever those huge concrete blocks were for. Just FYI. Mm -hmm. So the, as Mr. Gallarelli had explained before, um, any walls and landscaping that's under four feet in height does not require a permit from the town? I don't think it's under four feet. These are giant concrete blocks. They came in a semi tractor trailer in three different loads. They're huge. They're like about, I don't know exactly, but let's say three feet by four feet each roughly. And there's dozens. So that's fine, but I don't know that a permit was pulled for, pulled for that. I couldn't find it online. Okay. Um, so the, the applicant has indicated that they have a permit for the retaining wall, which would be on the, in this orientation on the left-hand side, the right property line. Um, Mr. Valarelli, would a permit for a site retaining wall appear on the town system? Uh, it would, Mr. Chairman. The um, ISD is behind on scanning. Uh, I do not know what else has been pulled for permits on this particular site. Uh, the fact that they are delivering rock, massive rock, uh, is by right. Uh, anybody can have rock delivered to that property. Um, the construction of the wall with the material is a different story, to the best of my knowledge. Right. I do not know if they pulled the permits for the retaining wall as, as of yet. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Doherty. I will state unequivocally that a permit has been issued based on engineered plans from Shea Precast, which is the reference to the vehicles mm -hmm. that brought those blocks in which they're about 16 inches in height when, when placed in, 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 into the uh, wall. And they range from either a width of 45 inch, 39 inch, 25 inch, um, all based on the engineering for that. In addition to that, as I mentioned earlier, there was a permit um, that was obtained for um, a dumpster on the front, front yard. Um, could be the street. We're fortunate we were able to put it on the lawn. Um, once the addition starts on the rear and the foundation is in, a dumpster would be out there because that's the bulk of where the work is taking place. When the demolition, which was just non-structural interior, uh, plaster, kitchen, et cetera, where it leads to that back addition, again, all predicated on that we did not need this uh, relief. Um, a permit was pulled for that. So there's been three permits pulled on that site. Um, and I will state that unequivocally. So I did, I did see the permits, but I didn't see any for the wall or the addition. Well, the addition is before us today. Um, so that work has not, there, there has been no construction on the house itself. 
Um, and as Mr. Valerelli had indicated, the, the permit for the retaining wall, there may be a delay and it's being posted to the, the town's website. Are there any further questions? Nope. Okay. Um, so with that, we have no one else in the queue. So I will go ahead um, and close the public comment period for this hearing. Um, so to the board, so what we have before us is an application um, requesting a determination and a special permit for a large addition, uh, which is the proposed addition here at the rear of the property and also includes um, an entrance piece here at the front of the property. Um, so just quickly review the plans. Uh, so the base, this is the existing footprint of the house. So this is the basement level addition at the rear. Um, existing property at the first floor, uh, some reconstruction in this area and then the addition above the garage space here. And again, um, at the second floor level, uh, the addition of the here at the rear of the building in elevation. Uh, this is the portion of the building that's the addition. Um, the side elevation joined the front, the new front entrance piece, um, and the rear, and the front elevation and the side, and it's the stairs and the, the decks as well, and sections through. Um, are there any further questions um, from members of the board? Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. So the question before us is whether this is, <clears throat> excuse me, whether this is all going to be in harmony with the neighborhood. Um, and it, uh, it, it seems to me that, that as the case has been presented to us, there's certainly been a prima facie case that it should be fine. It's good not to have the uh, impervious uh, pavement uh, up in that turning area that goes to the garage. Um, the, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong in principle with the retaining wall and so on. And the people who've spoken for it are not so much highly critical as they are puzzled. Um, and it seems to me that, that I mean, we have had this kind of situation before where what really is sort of would be helpful is to establish some kind of a way uh, of providing some notices to what's happening on the property and making sure that the people who have an interest in it know who to call and ask for um, and ask for a uh, an explanation and 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 so on because uh, much of much of the problem is that is that there's so much that that is happening that that people are not connected up for. And there's certainly a great deal of interest and, part, and much of that interest relates to the way in which what happens on this property is going to affect the neighboring properties, which is exactly what we're take care of, what we're supposed to think about when we think about whether or not this is harmonious. Um, and so I would like to see in some sort of a condition that is relatively loose, but maybe a little bit like we did on the Tough Street, that just provided that uh, Mr. Doherty or his general contractor, whoever's the appropriate people would make, would provide notice of the major stages as they happen and provide, uh, uh, and, and provide a mechanism so that the people who are interested in the neighborhood, certainly the abutters here um, could say, could you tell me what's, what's happening? Uh, I think that, that here I think a certain amount of communication uh, and just keeping people informed uh, would go a long way towards dissipating the concern that we've heard tonight. Yeah. 
other comments from the board? Switch sharing again. I'm going to return to the report from the Department of Planning and Community Development. Um, so they have done a preliminary review of the special permit criteria. Um, criteria one is the requested use is, is permitted by a special permit um, given district. Uh, proposal would update, modernize, provide additional living space to allow the owner's family to live in their child's at home. Will not increase traffic congestion. Will be an impairment to public safety. Um, will not create an undue burden on municipal systems. Will not result in the need for any special regulations. Um, so criterion six, integrity, character of the district. Um, So I'll just go ahead and read what they have written. Uh, homes in the vicinity of the property include a range of architectural styles, the majority of covered or enclosed entries and porches. The addition with the drive under garage will be located in the rear yard of the property and designed to complement the scale and style of the existing structure and adjacent homes in the neighborhood. A new enclosed entryway is also proposed. The applicant is encouraged to explore the potential to simplify or align window combinations and add roof detailing, particularly on the rear facade create an ordered appearance and reduce the gaps between the windows and the roof line. Consistent with residential design guidelines, the proposed design will add human scale architectural variation to the overall streetscape and visual interest to the front facade of the structure. Overall, this proposal would not detrimentally impact the neighborhood character of the district or joining districts, nor will it be detrimental to the health, morals, or welfare of the neighborhood of the property. Um, it would not create any detrimental excess of use. That's, that's the image and the part of the planning to development that is consistent with the permit criteria and can recommend approval. Um, so the proposed building, um, you know, it is a large addition, um, but it is kept, you know, it is, it's not encroaching on the street. It's on the rear side of the, of the house where the, they do have a very large rear yard. Um, for this, you know, for the district, this property is more than twice the size, twice the, is more than twice the minimum lot size, uh, which is very unusual for the district. Um, and so, you know, the, certainly this, and the, the fact that the building is not encroaching on any non, you know, any non-conforming um, side yards, that it is fully within the, um, it complies with all of the, all the yard setbacks. Um, <laughs> I know that the building department will confirm um, as we go forward that you know the, that the addition doesn't do anything in terms of um, changing the definition of the height of the property of the building. You know to confirm that the, it still stays within the the thirty five foot height requirement. Um, the building department will also confirm um, that the building is still within conformance of the you know the two and a half floor requirement um, for the district. It certainly, you know, the the issues that the the butters have you know, are are real and genuine concerns about the way that that water is going to move on this site um, as as the project moves forward. Um, the the applicant has engaged engineers um, to assist with that. They are working with the tree warden to address questions about uh, tree coverage and and maintaining. Um, a, a tree canopy and the health of the trees um, on the site. Um, as far and the, the and the you know the additional pavement towards the rear of the property will all be uh, pervious to reduce the the potential runoff um, from the from that and certainly the the question about the you know sort of the water at the very bottom of the property. Um, you know, sound, it sounds like it's an ongoing question and it's not particularly related to this specific work. Um, and hopefully that work would not, it, hopefully that the, you know, the new work will not be impacting that. Um, 
the applicant is required to comply with the uh, with the good neighbor agreement um, and provide notice um, to the abutters of the of the ongoing work. And as Mr. Hanlon had recommended, um, it might be advisable for the board to consider an additional um, condition in regards to uh, to notice to abutters of um, of ongoing work. And it may be helpful to um, to extend that to you know some of the the landscaping work at the rear, just in terms of um, of overall grading and um, you know whether there'll be any changes to to the water flow um, on the property. Are there is there anything further from other members of the board, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Riccadelli. I, I, yeah, I agree with uh, uh, with what the planning department wrote here. I think you know it's a quite a large addition, uh, but as you mentioned, the, the lot is uh, fairly large, and uh, as we've heard, uh, most of the abutters are concerned more with uh, the impacts of the addition, not the addition itself. Um, and I think the fact that um, the the sort of streetscape is preserved. Uh, with this design makes it uh, feel contextual for the neighborhood, so. Thank you. Are there any additional um, conditions that the board would want to consider? Um, so the, in most cases when the board, if the, if the board moves to approve an application, there are three standard conditions that the board would apply. Um, the first being that the plans and specifications approved by the board for the special permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with, excuse me, in connection with this application for zoning relief. There shall be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, criteria two, the building inspector is hereby notified that he to monitor the site and to proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time that's determined violations are present. The building inspector shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw and under the provisions of chapter 40, section 21D of the Massachusetts general laws and institute non-criminal complaints. If necessary, the building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1. And the third is the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to this special permit grant. Um, Hanlon's, um, Mr. Chairman, I have, as, unless you already have said, have done it better than I have. Uh, I've been working a little bit on a suggestion. So I have nothing. So I would oh, gladly yeah. hear your suggestion. Something doesn't necessarily beat nothing, but it, it at least gives you time. <laughs> um, so based on what we did with Tufts, I would say something like applicants will, applicant will coordinate with the butters to discuss issues uh, relating to, uh, I have to read my own writing here. Uh, relating to construction and grading insofar as they relate to safety uh, and uh, safety and erosion. In, in that context, what would coordination be? I think here, just as was true with the school division there, that, that there would be notice as to what is going on. And if people are concerned about safety due to for example, equipment being stored in the yard or, or not actually getting into the backyard, uh, possibly through the oversight of the contractor that those issues could be uh, withdrawn. But this is not a fierce con condition and it does not give rise to people freely to come back here and say, no, we need to have enforcement here. The condition is to discuss things mm -hmm. and to coordinate to address the problems. But at the end of the day, uh, it's, it doesn't, I mean, it, it, it's not very draconian. That sounds reasonable. There is a condition we have applied in the past, which is the board reminds the applicant to comply with the requirements of the good neighbor agreement, the construction control agreement, and other requirements in the town bylaws. Um, is that something members of the board think would be appropriate to apply here as well? I think that's appropriate, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Yep. Some nodding from Mr. Riccadelli as well. The 
given this evening, I doubt that Mr. Doherty is going to forget, but nevertheless. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Uh, Mr. Chair, could, could I just make one comment on that? If Doherty, if, yes, sir. Um, I too had the same concern. Um, I've watched Mr. Hanlon in your board, uh, which I um, was holding off to say, but I have been very impressed over the last six, eight months uh, when I found out I had to go there, how this board has ha handled applicants uh, so that I could try to address any issues came up. So I don't wanna be disingenuous. I thought I'd save that till afterwards, but I would just say it. So I saw how uh, skilled Mr. Hanlon is at writing these things, but I too, um, with all due respect, uh, it was just a little concerned about coordination as that could um, be interpreted in many different aspects. And I fully um, agree with the thrust of, of your, your condition and wonder if it's not kind of duplicative of the good neighborhood um, agreement, because um, I certainly plan to, um, you know, um, notify um, uh, about as, as directed in there of certain my, milestones and have contact information uh, where they're able to reach out individually as well. And mm -hmm. obviously um, I, I fully intend to do that. So with all due respect, any consideration you can give to those comments, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Doherty. Um, Mr. Hanlon, I think your comment is addressed more towards issues that are unrelated to the building itself and related to conditions on the site. Is that correct? I think that's, yes, that, that is mostly true. I, the way I first approached it was to be thinking about addressing the process of construction. Mm -hmm. And I expanded it a little bit in light of the chairman's comment about the other concerns relating to grading. Uh, and the potential effect on uh, on on water, uh, but I must say that my primary concern was to make sure that there was an open dialogue, as we've asked for in other cases, uh, to make sure that people are given I think a somewhat more granular bit of information than the good than is literally required by the Good Nation Agreement. I'd, I'd like to see the applicant go a step beyond that. Uh, because it's clear that already we're not we're not having something that's quite as transparent as would be desirable. Why if it makes we consider it more as like the board requests the applicant extend. The requirements of the good nature good neighbor agreement to issues of the regrading and re, and redevelopment of the lot in general that because then that would require that would thereby the the work that is ongoing in terms of the you know the, the wall and other grading and other things like that that notice of that notice of work in that regard would also be um fall under the good neighbor good neighbor agreement which i think ordinarily it would not mr chairman i you know i think that that may be the case the the truth of the matter is just to get to the nub of it is that regardless of our wordsmithing on the fly here, mm -hmm. the most important thing that could happen is if the folks who just talked to us tonight and Mr. Doherty got together and worked out what they do in order to make sure that the neighborhood is informed and that Mr. Doherty is informed if any problems that arise since he will not necessarily always know. And it's up to them to work it out and do so in good faith and, and so on. And our language is not going to do much good if they're not going to proceed in good faith. And it's and getting it exactly right isn't necessary if they are. Other members of the board have opinions on this?
not hearing any. Okay, so the board has before it uh, some of the requests for special permit uh, for large addition. There are the, we had read the three standard conditions. Um, we'd agreed to include the condition that the board reminds the applicant to comply with the requirements of the good neighbor agreement, the construction control agreement and other requirements in the town bylaws. Um, and then we have sort of two different versions of a, um, of an additional condition. Um, Mr. Hamlin, should we proceed with your drafting? Hey, I, you know, in, in all right. So I would. I think maybe the I change what I had said before and say that the applicant will cooperate with the butters. Uh, to discuss issues, I would just at this point say issues related to related to uh, uh, the impact of construction on the neighborhood. Okay, I used a broader thing to refer both to safety and to other kinds of things that that may be a problem relating to traffic and so on, without trying to identify each one of them separately. Okay. Chairman. Mr. Doherty. I, I, I'm fine with that, with all due respect to the board. Thank you. Okay. With that, unless there are any further questions from the board, I think we are ready for a motion. Mr. Chairman. I move that the Zoning Board of Appeals approve this application with the three standard conditions, which the uh, which the uh, uh, chair has read into the record, uh, plus the additional condition relating to reminding the applicant of the application of the good nature agreement and the condition that the applicant just agreed to regarding uh, cooperation with the butters to to discuss um, uh, the impact of construction on the neighborhood. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. So the state of the vote before the board is a motion to approve the special permit for 68 Brantwood Road with the five total conditions as outlined by Mr. Hanlon and seconded by Mr. Mills. Um, so a roll call vote of the board. And Mr. DuPont is not available this evening. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Aye. And the chair votes aye that um, the special permit for 68 Brentwood Road is approved. Thank you all very much for your patience. Thank you. Thank you to all the board members and uh, the neighbors. I look forward to getting to meet um, the ones I don't already know. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Doherty. Uh, next on our agenda. <coughs> there we are. Is number agenda item number six, uh, excuse me, number seven, which is docket number 3700, uh, which is 3840 Newport Street. Um, ask the applicants, let me stop sharing this. Applicants to introduce themselves and tell us what they would like to do. And in the meantime, I will be looking to bring the information um, up on the screen. How you doing? I'm Brandon Wilkalis. I'm sorry, my wife's putting my son down, so she's not gonna be able to join us, but um, we're looking to do a, um, addition a uh, dormer on um, the house to get some more uh, bedroom and a, another bathroom space. Um, uh, I know I, I did uh, read um, 
what the planning board came back and I, I didn't realize there had to be a slope of a two over 12 for the roof. So I did call my architect today and, and I spoke with her and she said uh, that wouldn't be a problem. And she said, "What I, I don't know if you guys have the plans um, from the side there. Um, working on getting them forward. Okay. Uh, well, while you're doing that, I'll just I'll speak to it. Um, so she said we could bring that trim board down that, that rides on the roof to like above the windows, which I think will look better anyways. And that will, um, and then I think she said we have to incre increase the, the ridge or the center of the roof. Um, I think it was like 10 inches and we would get that, that two to 12 slope to, to be conforming because um, everything we're doing is, um, is it's a non-conforming lot, but we're not increasing the non-conformity of the property. It's, it's all kind of, it's all with on the um, same foundation and stuff. Um, so by dropping that trim board and that, that wall, we'd, pr we'd probably bring it right, right above those windows and then be able to meet that, um, meet that two to 12. So I just wanted to give you guys, I just saw, saw this today. Um, so I didn't know about that. Um, if, if you go another page, that they, they'll you'll see the side view. Uh, one more, maybe. They, uh, no, one more. There you go. Okay. So I was thinking, I uh, see the trim board up there. I don't know what you call it, but that would drop down above the windows to get that slope. Okay. Um, back up quickly to the application. <coughs> Um, and you know, this, my understanding, and I, I would ask Mr. Valerelli to confirm, um, this project is before the board because the increase in the gross floor area um, requires the addition of usable open space under our bylaws, but at present, um, the property does not have any usable open anything that qualifies under the definition of usable open space and therefore um, it needs a determination by the board that uh, the proposed addition is not more detrimental to the neighborhood. Mr. Chair? Yes. John Leone, I'm the attorney for uh, Mr. Wokalis and his wife, um, Kara Boleski. <clears throat> yes, they are before you today for the um, large addition on adding the under the roof on the third floor, second two and a half floors. They are seeking a relief from the definition of open space because they have any qualifying less than 25 feet horizontal footage. They do meet the 30% requirement for open space. It's just the um, size of the lot and the configuration of the lot itself due to the streets. They are not increasing the non-conformity at all. Um, regarding that aspect of it. They um, meet the, do meet the 25, it's just 30%, it's just that 25% um, 25 foot mandate that they're not able to mm -hmm. abide by. Right. <clears throat> Again, they're not expanding the footprint at all, just adding some square footage onto the second and two and a half, second and a half floor. Okay, as, as the property is laid out, the existing condition on the property is by the definition of usable open space, the property has zero usable open space. Is that correct? By the definition, correct. Okay. And certainly after the addition on the third floor, that condition will be completely unaffected. Yeah, it's not gonna get any worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, I mean, this is a very typical condition in the, in the town that there are properties that have no land that qualifies as usable open space mm. and the board um, has often um, utilized the, the provision of the zoning bylaw that if there's an existing nonconformity, which this would certainly qualify as, if the, if the board can make a determination that the change is not more detrimental um, to the neighborhood, then the, the board will um, consider what is essentially an extension of the existing nonconformity. Um, and, and, the, and that's how the board typically um, addresses these, these types of cases. 
you know, that's what we're asking the board to do in this case. Um, and I think the not more detrimental to the neighborhood is there are other, a lot of other structures and as noted by the planning board's uh, memorandum in the neighborhood that have similar dormers and similar open space issues. And they are just um, asking to be put into that same category as all their neighbors. Thank you. Um, this is the basement plan. Um, so it looked, I believe the intention is to expand the first floor unit into the, into the basement level. Um, the addition of two bedrooms. Right, they essentially it's a one over one with two bedrooms on the first and the second floor. They wanna expand into the basement and give the first floor Equip four bedrooms, and the purpose of the dormer is to give the second floor unit four bedrooms as well. Okay. More in keeping with how modern families live as opposed to two bedrooms, um, which don't quite always function in, mm -hmm. in our modern lifestyle. Okay. Uh, so this is the basement level plan. Um, this is the proposed first floor plan. So Again, this was stated, there's no change to the outside of the building. There's no change to the access to the building. Um, and the first floor, it's always just a slight reconfiguration and an addition of a stair to the basement uh, that's more usable for the unit. Uh, unit two, uh, again, just a, a you know reconfiguration on this existing floor, on the existing second floor, which has current two bedrooms that are being maintained. And then the addition into the attic floor um, with the with the proposed addition, uh, which we can, the, uh, we'll just note that on the stairway there is a little shed dormer over that stairway to give it um, adequate headroom. Okay, we'll make that clear that that's being added as well. You can see that on the elevation. Yeah. So that's the that's this piece, this new piece of roof here that goes over the stairs. Correct. Correct. Proposed. We have about three and a half feet. Um, and so this is the view from Newport Street at the front of the house. So what what um Brandon was saying before is after we saw the um, memorandum of the planning board today, he's gone back to his architect. So the slope would become that two over twelve. Mm -hmm. which would change the slope of that dormer um, to an acceptable level or an acceptable slope. Okay. And also, I think, personally, I think it would improve the look of the house. I think it's going to look better, actually, yeah, myself. I think so. Give you a better roof, too. It won't be as flat. <laughs> right, right, because flat roofs leak, so. This is facing Gray Street? This, uh, this side does face Gray Street. Is that right? Um, that's um, that. That faces down the hill. I think that's yeah. yeah that's that's that's, that's Grace Street. Street. Yeah, that's Grace Street. Okay. It's tough to tell behind the bushes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the bushes are really tall. Um, this is the rear elevation, um, and this is the uh, the left side elevation. This is the the downhill side. Um, so these two windows would the basement level windows. These would be egress windows for yes, they will. for those units. I think those are existing. So this is then the, the section through uh, the proposed addition. Um, so my first question is why the top floor addition is wider than the floor below? Uh, well, I think it's incorrect in this drawing. The left side, I think they had originally cantilevered, um, but uh, when I looked at it, the um, I didn't look at it, the, the survey gentleman told me that there's only like uh, four inches before you would hit um, the, the 10 foot setback, I guess. So that's just gonna be flush that side. The other side is gonna be, the gray street side will be cantilevered, but I think by 18 inches. Um, and it kind of goes with the, the theme of the building. If you look on that side, there's also a cantilever coming. I think it's the first floor. You don't see it on the plans, but I don't, actually you have pictures of the home, I think, right? From the... I have... Uh, you can't see it, the bushes hide it. 
I was going to say, I have the report from. Yeah. I had the planning board on the last page had a picture of that side, but the bushes are so tall, you can't see it. Anyways, it, there's an area that, that jets out kind of like where the dining room is. Uh, no, other mm -hmm. side. So there's this small feature at the front. That's the front, though. There's another one of those on the other side. Yeah, the bushes cover it. Okay. Anyways, this, uh, see that, that mic, uh, not the microwave, the air conditioner? Yep. There's one of those um, kind of cantilevered things there, too. Okay. Yeah, just can't let me get out on the. So when you're drawing, Brandon, the uh, north side is going to be flush? So the, the, the side of the house that abuts the neighbor will be flush. The side mm -hmm. of the house that abuts Gray Street will have the cantilever that matches the below cantilever. Very good. Site plan. Yeah, so um, you can, oh, they can't see it there. It's a second oh, floor you, overhang. Yeah. Yeah, but the the setback here was at ten, was is ten foot ten point. Yeah. So so what what the um the survey guy told me was I could only have like a four inch overhang. So it's not worth doing all that type of work. Absolutely. You know. But what is the is there something? Of, it's very unusual to do this kind of a an overhang at the third floor level. So I'm just I'm trying to understand if there's something particular related to the building that. No, of, I mean I just thought I mean I like the way it matched with the with the first floor how it, it came out, and the cantilever I think ends at the roof line, so it's really not going to like look like it's hanging over. It's going to be flush with the roof line. See what I'm saying? If you put the picture back, the roof has a, I don't know what you call it, like an overhang that's pretty, pretty deep. Back to that one. Yeah. So I, I believe it'll come right to like kind of the roof line, the, uh, the out, the outskirt of the roof there. The soffits? Uh, yeah, yeah. Right there, yeah. Flip back to the plans. So I will. So I. That's showing the. Um, that's not on that left side where that little dormer is for the stairs. That's not going to be cantilever. That's. I don't, I don't right. know he's old. Great. So I, I live in this neighborhood. I, I'm actually um, on the next block of Newport Street. Okay. Um, so I'm well familiar with the with this house and the and the comment on the hedge, um, which is a spectacular hedge. Um, it was good privacy for the cars. <laughs> um, in in seeing this view, it it made me very concerned about that it's not only you know, it, it basically it's a it's a large flat box being added into the roof area. Yeah. Uh, and it, and as you said, you you were unaware of the requirement that there be a a two twelve minimum pitch um, on the roof, and so that that will be addressed. Um, in looking at the section, um, there's not a lot of elevation material available, but I'm not sure why there was the need to raise the roof height above the current ridge line and I was wondering if you could well I wanted I wanted high ceilings I didn't want it to feel it's a small area as it is mm -hmm. it's, it's narrow because because the, what the architect said is with the hips on either side of the roof you don't want to get into that because the, the, the cost to start reframing all that is a fortune mm -hmm. so what she did was basically went from hip to hip with it so, I mean, that's kind of, you know, that's, we didn't have much room. So I'm like, well, if we get some head height in there, at least the rooms will feel open and, you know, hopefully get some sunlight in there. And, you know, it's, it's not, it's not ideal. I mean, I know most people dorm are like one side of the house, mm -hmm. but in this case, I mean, it would cost a fortune. You'd have to take the whole roof off. I, I mean, I don't think there's any other way to do it. Now, certainly reframing it as a, as a gable roof would be a 
tremendous undertaking. Or oh, a full gable? Oh, yeah. You'd have to take basically take the hat off the house and Absolutely. put one on. But I do think it will look a lot better with that pitch on the roof. It'll kind of match that um, the, that little shed right there going up for the stairs. Mm -hmm. I think it'll look a lot better. I didn't like the square look either, but I didn't really know what I, what to do. But now with that, with that um, being said, the two to twelve, that I think that's going to improve the look of it from the front and the back much better now. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mills, I share your concern about the additional height of the roof. And I think what you're going to see from the front is two roof lines pitched at different pitches and one starting higher than the other, which is going to be asymmetrical. You architects can uh, ponder on that better than me, but you know, I'm just looking at common sense here. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think architecturally? Uh yeah, so the so one of the things that the board is is tasked with when it is doing a, a an application such as this as a special permit application is to review the project in regards to the residential design guidelines and the guidelines were developed and implemented by the town to sort of assist in um, providing guidance to uh, redevelopment of property in town and specifically the residential property in town and so. Um, the residential design guidelines get applied any time that uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals um, is reviewing a project. Um, and so we're going you know, to sort of take a look at that and, and to evaluate um, you know, how, well the, the, how well the proposal um, addresses the concerns um, and, the, the, and the sort of the specifics of the guidelines themselves. Um, and so that's sort of where the where this comes in, uh, where normally, um, you know, the zoning board doesn't get too much into architectural um, into architectural features, in, but under if it's a project where you know there are questions of, about the residential design guidelines, then the board does have some discretion to um, go down this avenue. Um, let's go. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Riccadelli. So uh, just, you know, I, I share your concern about the kind of tall element at the top and uh, maybe uh, the applicant could just explain to us uh, if if you guys are adding a uh, slope with the ridge line, the, you know, um, kind of just above the center of the ridge of the roof below, and then you're sloping kind of either way, or would you be changing the direction of the roof to make it uh, you know, what they would call a gable dormer. So uh, it would come kind of perpendicular to the ridge line of, of the roof facing the kind of two side side streets. Well, when I when I ran the numbers today, I, I think it's going to be like a 30 inch difference from where the it's uh, where that trim board is now to the windows. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know if we'll be able to get seven feet on that outside, because I did read the thing here, they said you have to have a seven foot on the outside wall. Mm -hmm. um, so wherever that would come in, I, I think, I mean, 30, it's, it's a, I think it's 15 from the sound of the roof. So that's 30 inches. So that's going to drop down, I think, right above. I'm trying to think what shingles she specced out there for it's a five inch reveal or what, but one, two, three shingles. It's going to come right down to the top of the windows, I think. So it would be it would be like similar to what the roof is now if you're looking at it from the front of the back. I think it's still a different degree, but it would definitely be a lot closer to what it is existing. I think it will look better as well. I, I agree. I, I mean, I think that's an improvement. I you know I think um, it's quite typical uh, in uh, this or these neighborhoods and, and this sort of. Uh, Type of construction to have um, sort of instead of having shed dormers where it's angling kind of out from the middle, actually to do the other way. Um, so maybe that's something um, you know to look at if you guys are looking at that roof slope because you may actually not lose as much head height in that in that orientation. Mr. Chairman, Mr. H Mr. Hanlon, 
so when I think about this from the point of view of somebody who may write an opinion, the first condition that we would have is that the uh, construction uh, has to correspond with the final plans that have been submitted to the board. And at this point, we're talking about hypothetical plans and guessing what they'll look like. And I'm wondering whether we shouldn't be allowing ourselves the time to actually get a plan, uh, look at it, let Mr. Wilkalis look at it and, and, and to see how it actually works rather than rather than imagining it based on the on the plans we have now i think that i think that that's entirely appropriate um i think i'd like to use this time to try to get um you know the, the to vet the questions and concerns that the board members have uh to make sure that the the applicant has all of the um you know, is aware of all the questions and concerns that are posed by the board before going back to his architect um, to just dis to discuss um, adjustments to the to the plan. Um, as is, you know, as has already indicated that he needs, that he needs to do so in terms of the the slope of the roof. Um, and Mr. Then I Chairman, I wonder if I could just add that. And while we've been talking here, I do have a couple of pictures. And in fact, if I've been quicker, I have one that shows the cantilever underneath the air <laughs> conditioner that Mr. Wilkalis was uh, was saying uh, since I went over by the next yard to, to take the picture back in. Um, but the thing that struck me as I looked at the pictures is that from the angle where I was and given what's already there and obviously not what's going to put there, uh, the angle of view is such that it's exceedingly difficult for me to make out anything really that goes above above the bottom of that of that line there's there's a dormer already there but it's very difficult to see from the back um, you know if i were the the size of a very large basketball player i might see it a little differently but is you know it's difficult to see now i can't say what i would see if suddenly the bushes were taken down and i could see it from there but on the sidewalk on that side of the street the angle is such that it's hard to see what's on the roof and that that may be a consideration hmm. Absolutely. obviously you can go to the other side of the street and you might see more right? but yeah you, you have to walk up uh more up uh, Newport to see, you know, the actual dormer. The, the bushes, they're very high, which is nice. But I mean, I, I'd be definitely amenable to, you know, putting that outside wall, um, you know, bringing that, that uh, trim board down to the top of the windows, get that two over 12. And I think that's going to be, it's going to make it look a lot better. I mean, um, I don't know if you guys, if, if that would please the board, um, that's a 30 inch drop, yeah. you know, from that, from the current roof line to where it would be, you know? Yeah, the current roof line is um, from the ridge line of the existing to the new ridge line is 10 foot eight inches. So it would drop down 30 inches from that, which we're all, we're all speculating would be about yeah. a quarter. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Mills. Did I hear somebody comment they were thinking about increasing the height of the ridge line to assist in uh, obtaining that slope? I'd like that clarified. Well, I, I know when I spoke to the architect, she said she has to figure out where. So you have to have seven, seven feet on the inside for head height to be considered the, uh, uh, this uh, two and a half story dormer. So we have to make up that two to 12. And she said that that uh, the center of the roof may have to come up in order to get the pitch that we need. It's about that's still, it's still, it's uh, the top of the roof I think is only 30 feet now. So we have 35 feet so we can do that, but it would just, we gotta get that exterior down to get that two to 12. So I, Mr. Valorelli, I don't think that's a specific requirement that it was on the it was on the planning board uh, thing here. It says um, the roof framing to the finished floor below uh, below has a clear height of seven feet, zero inches or more. The slope of the proposed dormer is a quarter to 12 currently 
which is less than the minimum allowable roof slope under the half story definition. Mm -hmm. yeah, so there's two things going on here, Mr. Chairman. I think the applicant is worried about the legal uh, size of the height of a room um, based on the building code. And he's also concerned about the um, to make this work so he can raise what was what is now a flat roof to get a minimum of uh, two and 12. I think we're looking at two different things, but two very relevant things as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because certainly there's my understanding of the of the the bylaw and the way that it's typically interpreted is that um, when we're calculating the half the half story, it's the the area that is seven feet or greater from the finished floor to the underside of the roof framing that counts as 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 square footage. That, that is but, and, but the other but the portions that are less than seven feet tall. They just don't count towards the gross square footage, but they are perfectly habitable. That is absolutely correct, Mr. Chairman. And so it's, it's typical, um, as you would see with a lot of the, the half-story additions, the outside wall, it may be 6'8", it may be 6'6". Six, six. Correct. Um, and that helps you to get, the, to get the, the pitch in. And so, you know, if you're standing right against the window, it's a little bit tight. But, you know, once you step back into the room, then you still have, then you pretty much have the you know the full height of the space that is absolutely correct mr chairman mr mills yes can i ask a question to mr valorelli you may mr valorelli is there a minimum ceiling height required in this um alteration there is so uh mr mills so the building code says that the ceiling height has to be seven feet uh, finish to finish and, and greater than 50% of the area that we're talking about. So in other words, more than half of the space has to be have a ceiling height of uh, seven feet or greater. So maybe the architects on the board can help me out with that. That is how I know it. I don't know if the code has changed. Uh, Mr. Klein, I think I'm correct on that. That's, it, I believe that's the correct percentage. Yeah, it's greater than half. It's always greater than half. Thank so you. That, so that's something to consider. Um, obviously, I believe the code is also where there's toilets and showers. You have to have a minimum ceiling height of six foot eight. Yeah, that's correct. Absolutely. All right. That that's often something that comes up is that those those are on the outside wall, and then you you're again pushing up. But here, the proposal is to keep those towards the center, so that that would not be an issue in this regard. Correct. Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Holly. Yeah, this, the attic floor here mentions 560 square feet, which is more than half of the floor below, which is the second floor. No, it's 497. So Holly, where did you find that number? It was on the sheet A1.3. Right. Yeah, so this, this plan is not correct. That, that's not correct. It's what we filed for was the um, it's 497. That's what the planning board has as well. Okay. So that's yeah. So that number is different. That's an error, clerical error. The number that's so, here. Yeah, that's the correct number, 497. It's okay. it's it's less than um than that than the floor below, less than half. Yeah. So that's a, something to pick up as well and and reconsidering the when they're doing the when you're redoing the the drawing on the pitch to pick that up as well um we'll go ahead i'm gonna stop the share on this i know we have um we do have members of the public who've been hanging out with us this evening um who may wish to address this project so i want to be absolutely sure that we we get to those so i was going to go ahead and open uh for public comment at this time um just a brief reminder we take questions and comments as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing the decision um 
Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participant tab in the Zoom application. And those calling in by phone, you can dial star nine to indicate you'd like to speak and you'll be called upon um, and asked to address the board. Uh, so with that, we have uh, a hand raised from Mr. Steve Moore. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, uh, Piedmont Street. Um, one of the problems with trees and bushes and the like around a house is that they are impermanent. Um, they die off, they don't get replaced, they get hit by a car and they're gone. Um, the bushes are magnificent. I hope they are retained, but my guess is that they, I, I, it's, not, it's not for sure they will be retained. And the difficulty here is this being a corner lot, the, the idea of dropping a box on top of a house like this um, means it's going to be quite visible from the two streets that it's the corner lot of. And um, I, I don't know how it's going to look with the improved roof line that you folks have been discussing. Uh, hopefully it will be improved significantly. Uh, one addition I'd like to, uh, to, one suggestion that I'd like to make an addition is that one of the problems is that the windows that are part of this these shed dormers are very large compared to the windows on the second and first floor of the home, which are obviously quite a bit older in keeping with the style of the house when it was built. Um, I think probably they need to be mimicked to not draw attention to what is a box on top of the house that's very different in sort of shape and style from the rest of the house. So I would just make that one suggestion. Mr. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. If, if I may, Mr. Chairman, um, to Mr. Moore's point, um, maybe Mr. Um, Ballarelli can confirm, but we had he had those larger windows um, drawn by the architect for um, safety and fire exit purposes, and there was a minimum from size that they could be. And I think Mr. Um, Coolis did explore that with the architect. I did. I, I actually questioned her again today because I, I realized they're larger than the rest of the windows. But she said that there's a minimum window size for egress for fire, and that's that, that's the smallest ones. Is a five foot by three one. Uh, hmm. So, Mr. Holly, that would be uh, examined by ISD during plan review. Hmm. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Yeah, because the. Because part of the question is that these are, you know, the, these basement level windows are expected to be egress windows, and these are e egress windows, and obviously the size is very, very different. I know that these are probably either awning or hopper windows. No, those are going to be removed. Those are way too small. Okay. I think those are the existing windows. That yeah, those are there. those are the old original ones. Oh, they do say exist. Beg your pardon. Yeah. Okay. Are there further questions or comments from the public? Anyone? There are people in the waiting room now. Oh, Mr. Holly is in the waiting room. Further questions from the public? Going once, going twice. Go ahead and close public comment for this hearing on this date. Um, so given what we've heard so far and the comment we received, um, I think it, the, the, so the best course of action is to give the applicant some time to work with his architect. Um, to sort of address the questions that have been raised um, by, by the members of the board and by the public, um, and also some questions about the um, uh, conformity with, with the, the, with the zoning bylaw. So um, if the applicant doesn't object, I think the board would uh, recommend a continuance um, to our next scheduled meeting, uh, which is in two weeks, unless that's too quick and you'd 
No, I can I can have it. I should have gotten it done today. I'm sorry. She made an error. So oh. I, 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 I'm not an architect. She should have known the two by 12, I guess. But um, I can have it um, to you in a few days. And uh, the 28th, I believe, is two weeks, right? The 28th is, is two right. weeks. So we would okay. we'd be looking for material at least the Friday before. OK, That's so it's 24th. Yeah, the latest. 24th, the latest. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hanlon, I just wanted to our recent and actually not so recent experience is that it often seems to be the case that what seems to be easily doable tonight turns out not to be so easily doable, probably because a lot of people are busy and doing lots of other things and they don't get done in time. Uh, and there were, as Mr. Wilkallis pointed out, a number of other things that were problematic with respect to some of these drawings uh, that were inaccurate here and there. Uh, ultimately, whatever drawings we appear, we approve are going to be the ones he's going to be held by when it goes comes time to to uh, do this. And and I would just encourage. Uh, I mean, we obviously, if he's not ready, we can go out a little bit further too, but I just want to sort of drive home the, the notion that, that we are going to need things that are just exactly what he wants. Uh, and that uh, if he's concerned about uh, whether or not the, app, the architect will have the time or will be able to provide what he needs, uh, he's, it would be better off making sure you have the time to do it right than have to do it over and over. I should be ready for the 28th. Okay. In, in, yeah, I just um, ask a question. Is the board meeting in July? We are. Um, so if, I know we're already scheduled for July 12th. Um, I do not know about the 26th. Okay, thank you. Are there any further questions or comments? If not, the I will entertain a motion to continue the special permit hearing for 3840 Newport Street until Tuesday, June 28th at 7.30 p.m. Chairman, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Thank you, members of the board. Thank you for your time. Well, we still got We still got to vote. <laughs> <laughs> it, it could go down. You never know. <laughs> have a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Okay. Uh, vote of the board. Mr. Dupont is not with us this evening. Uh, Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Mr. Rigardelli. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. And the chair votes aye. So the. Special permit hearing for 3840 Newport Street is continued until Tuesday, June 28th at 7.30 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, board members. Thank Good you. night. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Valorelli. Take care, Mr. Leone. Bye-bye. So that was the last formal item on our agenda. Um, so our next hearing is scheduled for Tuesday, June 28th at 7.30. We now have three continuances um, scheduled for that hearing. Um, those being uh, 82 Grandview, which may or may not be proceeding, uh, 30 Venner Road, which we are expecting will proceed, and now uh, 2840 Newport Street, which we expect to be proceeding as well. Um, and then on Tuesday, July 12th, um, I believe Mr. Valerelli, you said there's two cases for that evening? Uh, we do, Mr. Chairman. So the packages are somewhat incomplete, so I don't know if those are going to be ready or not. Okay. We did advertise anticipating that they would be to give us plenty of time, but uh, we'll, we'll wait and see. There's some, some issues with each case. Okay. All right. And then uh, just members of the board, uh, I had uh, sent an email around uh, last week, sort of asking people for their summer schedules to sort of confirm when people are around, when people are not around. So if you can uh, just let me know your schedule, if you haven't already, um, I can put those in. I know we're already down a couple people for uh, one of the August dates, um, but that's, that's all I've heard about so far. So just let me know on that, that'd be great. 
Otherwise, I would like to thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. Especially wish to thank Rick Valarelli, Vincent Lee, and Marissa Lau for their assistance in preparing for this online meeting. Please note the purpose of the board's recording of this meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of the proceedings. And it's our understanding the recording made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. And if anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Um, Mr. Chair. Mr. Moore. I'd like to ask one question before you adjourn. Uh, 40B project that we've heard all about uh, at 1024 Mass Ave. Yes. Um, I know that they have uh, provided an intent to the town. What is the schedule for when that would eventually come before your board? So there was a meeting, a, there was a site meeting a couple weeks back. Yes. With the, with the applicant and a representative from Mass Housing. So they need a letter of determination from Mass Housing that okay. proves the project to go forward. And that letter has not been issued yet. And my understanding sort of from talking on site, it sounds like Mass Housing is kind of backed up at the moment. Um, and so it may take them a while before that gets issued. But really until Mass Housing issues that letter, um, they can't really proceed with anything. Um, okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That, that absolutely. Helps. So once once that letter gets approved, then they can put together their final application package, and then once that occurs, then the board has thirty days to open the hearing, and then we have one hundred and eighty days to close. Okay. So that's where we're now sort of waiting on Mass Housing to work with the applicant. Uh, thank you. There just are some significant tree issues in that site. Oh, there are. There's some beautiful trees there. Oh yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> With that, um, this could be one of our last few online gatherings. So the current bylaw expires on the current law expires on July fifteenth. So we'll figure out what's next. But with that, uh, we, we, we now have our motion before us to adjourn. Um, Oh, actually, we need the motion. So who's moving? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. And a second? second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Vote of board who is president. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mills. Aye. Mr. Fidelli. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Chair votes aye. The board is adjourned. Thanks, guys. Nice job. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Thanks so much.